Welcome everyone to another of my min-max character creation videos for Pillars of Eternity. This time round we're going to be taking a look at the fighter class and specifically we're going to be looking at a build I'm calling the DPS Rescue Fighter which is going to act in a, quite a different way to how you would expect a fighter to normally act. Now before I go into details about why I've picked a race and certain attributes which I'm sure you'll be interested in, I'm going to go over the basics of the fighter class. So the starting ability is constant recovery. Fighters continually regenerate endurance at a modest rate during combat. They have three skills, one point in athletics, law and survival. And they have some of the best starting stats of any of the classes in the game. Their endurance and health is high. Uh, they have the highest accuracy and the highest deflection amount. Now normally, fighters are excellent frontline uh, classes, that's what you should probably use them for in most circumstances. That's why Obsidian have recommended these stats. These stats are great for uh, frontline classes. But with this rescue fighter, I'm going to be using this fighter in a different way. So basically, this fighter will act just behind the frontline uh, members of your party. And any opponents that slip by them this fighter will be used to mop them up or uh, stop them from getting towards your more weaker uh, party members like wizards for example. The fighter is actually really good in that role because it has certain things like knockdown and there's uh, another ability as well which I'll be mentioning later that works with this. Knockdown doesn't actually last for very long so that's one reason why I've increased my intelligence a lot so it has uh, more duration effect so they stay down longer when you knock them down. Now when this guy isn't lurking behind the front lines looking for opponents to uh, tackle before they get to your weaker party members he's going to be using his pike in the main, that's the weapon I'd recommend or arquebuses or arbalists to do massive amounts of damage so you can stick him behind your frontline fighters and use the pike then. Because of his really high stats though this guy can actually take a decent amount of a beating even though I haven't raised my resolve or constitution that much. So when you're trying to create a character that does a lot of damage, you always want to invest highly in might and dexterity and I've done that here. So extra, these are, these are really your DPS stats, your damage per second, so your extra damage and your extra, extra action speed. And as I mentioned, I want high intellect for the duration abilities. So I've minimized resolve since that's a stat we need the least. And perception, we don't massively need it, but it'd be nice to have a tiny amount of interrupt. But with two-handed weapons, yeah, interrupt usually isn't that great. I tend to prefer it on uh, very frequent attacking uh, two weapons, one in each hand, uh, even though they do less interrupt mounts, those weapons. So that's why I've only stuck Perception on 11, and with my remaining points I stuck it down to Constitution. Because of the fighter's high initial stats, he will have a very high amount of endurance and health, even with that low Constitution. For the actual race, this is actually quite a difficult choice. There isn't really a race that particularly suits this build very well. Now when I'm looking for a race, I generally look for uh, the stats that uh, correspond to the maximized stats I'm using. So in this case a godlike would probably be the best option since it increases intellect and dexterity. But the thing with the godlike is there isn't really a sub race here that particularly works well with this build in my opinion. The death godlike would be the best but this tends to work when you're using very fast weapons that do not so much damage and this build is going to be using two handed weapons which do a lot of damage. If you're playing on Path of the Dam, this will still uh, trigger quite a frequent amount because those the opponents on Path of the Dam tend to have higher endurance. You may want to take this uh, as a godlike for this class, but you probably shouldn't have too many godlikes within your party because you won't be able to use special helmets uh, with each party member if you have too many of them. So if you're not going to pick a godlike, the elf is not a bad pick. It gives you extra dexterity. You don't really need a perception. At the start of combat you can use an Arbalist or an Arquebus or two so you can benefit from the uh, 4 meter accuracy boost. 
Pale Elf, you could potentially go for that to get a huge amount of burn and freeze damage reduction. But that's got limited use. The Armawa has bonus to Might. That's a race you could consider. I wouldn't really recommend the Coastal Armawa since you're not using it as a frontline uh, fighter. Island Armawa though, you could use that. That would give you an extra weapon set so maybe you have an extra Arcubus to fire off before you get involved with a Pike. The other races, I don't really like the human's ability at all, although they do, do give a bonus to Might. Uh, you don't need the Resolve either, so it's kind of a waste of points there, in my opinion. Dexterity makes the Dwarf a bad pick, because you want that. And likewise, you need Might, so the Orlan arguably isn't such a good pick either. So I think, for my pick, I'm just going to pick the Wood Elf. The reason I've gone for Ovalus for the extra intelligence, the make the knockdown abilities longer and the other duration effects the fighter has. And Colonist, uh, basically because you have very high intelligence and might, certain skills become better because of that. Law, Survival and Mechanics, because they all have, uh, well, potions last longer, the scrolls last longer and do more damage, and the traps likewise as well. I'm going to be going into details later on when I do the abilities and talents to what skills I would pick. And speaking of that, I think I'm actually ready to do that now. Okay, so skills, talents, and abilities. We're going to do skills at level 12. So let's get to uh, our first talent at level 2. So we've got an option here of a bonus knockdown or rapid recovery. And of course, uh, all of the early level basic talents. So this guy really needs knockdown. So let's pick that as our first talent pick. And for our first ability, I am actually going to pick the Discipline Barrage here. Now, because of our high intellect, this lasts a lot longer. This gives extra accuracy, so we can do even more damage per second. Now, if you're going for a frontline fighter, you'd probably go for Defender or definitely go for Defender. It is possible I may pick this later on, still. Uh, it kind of depends how much of a uh, rescue part of the build you want to focus on, if, whether you pick that or not. Uh, it's Confident Aim and it's Guardian Stance, which I'll talk about maybe a bit later on. But yeah, let's pick Discipline Barrage. And Skills, next one. So we've got Rapid Recovery again. I don't think I'm actually going to pick this. Now, I'd always pick this if I was a frontline fighter, but uh, this guy shouldn't be getting attacked too often since he's going to be behind the lines. So here I think I should pick my weapon focus so I'm going to be soldier this gives accuracy bonus to pike uh, great sword warhammer arbalist and arquebus and we're going to be using mainly the pike the arbalist and the arquebus uh, probably well definitely pike in one of those the arquebus actually got nerfed quite a bit in the recent patches so arbalist may actually be the way to go but uh, depends on whether we can get one or not Right, so let's pick Soldier. And next, Talent. So at this level with the Fighter, we get quite a few new options. I really like Into the Fray for a frontline fighter, but it wouldn't really work very well for this guy since you don't want um, people directly in combat with him. All of the weapon specializations are extra damage. I think that's actually what we're going to be taking here. Vigorous Defense, that's a get out of jail card pick really for this type of fighter. It's not awful by any means. But we're going to pick the Weapon Specialization Soldier. Okay, so we're really maximizing my DPS uh, with these picks so far. So the next talent pick, there's no good pick there again still. So what am I going to pick here? There's two-handed style since we're going to be using all our weapons we're going to be using them basically two-handed that's quite a good pick there's some potential picks here I don't really like vulnerable attacks so much with uh, builds that do a lot of damage the two-handed type builds this tends to be better for uh, one-handed weapons or two one-handed weapons if you see what I mean well, this is the Savage Attack, 
that comes at the expense of Aquasin as modal. It interferes with some other modal abilities, but it's not a bad pick for the fighter. Hold the line. That's kind of a frontline pick, so I wouldn't really recommend that. You don't need the extra deflection. Both of those are frontline picks. There's nothing really there that I would recommend. And there's some here which I might pick later on, but for now I'm going to pick two-handed style. Okay, level seven. On the next fighter abilities, I think you can pick Armor Grace. That's tend to be that's potentially not too bad actually, but sixteen percent seems a low amount to me. With this uh, DPS rescue fighter, you probably want a tiny bit of armor, but not too much since it lowers your uh, damage per second. The recovery speed is reduced with armor, so it's not terrible, I guess. But uh, the pick here I'm definitely going to be picking is clear out. So this basically, sadly, is only per rest, but uh, it does crush damage, and more importantly, it prones your enemies, just like the knockdown ability does. So this is excellent for uh, preventing people from hitting your wizards if you're lurking this guy behind the front line, waiting for people to potentially get past. It's another way you can take them down. So I'm going to take clear out here. What's some bending again? That's per rest. And that's a healing ability, which... Um, not sure you need. So take that pick there. Now level 8. At level 8 this becomes available it seems to for some reason. I'm not sure why we didn't get it earlier. But this is yet more damage to our uh, pick. The uh, soldier pick. So yeah definitely going to pick that. At level 9. Well uh, what else have we got? I think... Which one of these are new at level 9? I can't uh, remember. That might be. So we don't want that. We don't want that. At this point, to be honest, it kind of becomes personal preference. You're not really going to weaken your character that much if you pick something over another. So... This one... That's defensive. That's defensive. That helps out your other party member. So it's not bad at all, actually, if uh, you want to give them a hand. Uh, that one... That one actually does more damage, that's more of the DPS part. That one's defensive. That is kind of DPS. Let's pick... I think I'm going to pick Confident Aim here though. Uh, get even more damage basically. And level 10. So we've got two talent picks left here. And we're running out of good options to pick to be honest. So... Let's take a look at the utility ones. Now, Deep Pockets arguably isn't such a bad one uh, for this character build since you may want a bit of lore and you may want to be focusing on potions. I'm going to do my skills a bit later on, so having the extra slots could be very nice. Arms Bearer can give you an extra Archibus to fire before early on in combat, so I quite like that pick as well. Uh, is there something I'm forgetting? I don't know if there is. If there is, I'll mention it in annotations, but I don't think there are many good picks here left at all now, really. Um, so I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take Arms Bearer next. Give ourselves an extra Archibus Arabilis to fire off at start of combat. Level 11 is our last ability pick. You can pick Unbroken, which that's kind of best for frontline fighters again. I think for this last pick you should probably be focusing on the uh, rescue bits so if you're if you're in a bit of trouble giving this guy a bit more survivability so if you have to stick him in uh, adjacency with another opponent basically and uh, so he's receiving attacks so if uh, in that situation defender isn't that actually isn't that bad here you get extra deflection you can uh, take on more enemies, so wouldn't, that's not a bad pick. Vigorous Defense actually may be better though. An extra uh, 20 to all defenses. So, what else is there? That's good for helping out your uh, other party members. You may want to pick that. So, here I'd probably recommend either Guardian Stance or Vigorous Defense, I think. So, let's pick... Let's pick that one. Guardian Stance. 
and level 12 so let's do our skills now so if we max that out we can get up to level 14 in survival but I don't think I'm going to I really think lore a tiny bit of lore have uh, level 2 scrolls could work well because we have high intelligence and high um, what is it might so a bit in that and with the rest you probably want to invest in athletics so he doesn't get tired too quickly I think that's a pretty good way to go here. Uh, survival, well that's duration of potions mainly isn't it? Most of the potions are defensive in nature but I think some are more offensive. Uh, yeah definitely some are actually so you could have more DPS by having high survival. I think that's what I recommend here. You probably don't need much stealth because this isn't a frontline guy so he's going to be in the middle of a party when you're moving around. Uh, mechanics, you probably want to leave someone else in a party do that. So that's probably the skills I recommend here. And for our last talent pick, at this point it doesn't really matter, it's personal preference. I think because I've got a bit of lore and a bit of uh, high survival, I'm going to go for deep pockets so we've got more uh, quick item slots. Right, and that's up to level 12 for the DPS Rescue Fighter. Let's take a look at how I would use the... Uh, this build in combat. Okay, so I've set up a combat scenario here. So these bandits tend to break engagements a lot. So what my fighter is going to be doing is try to sweep up any uh, opponents that get past the front line and try to attack my rogue here. Uh, so he's protecting. If I had a wizard or a priest, I'd basically be doing the same thing with him. So he's basically protecting the yes. weak members of the party. Eh? So let's uh, kick things off by bringing the rogue forward and I'll attack this bandit here. I've leveled up my fighter uh, to level 7 using uh, the same abilities and uh, talents I was picking earlier on. I'm actually using a greatsword instead of a pike in this situation. I think the greatsword works better against people who break engagement because you need to... Uh, get into direct combat with them uh, much more. Uh, so the great sword also uh, works with the weapon focus for soldier as well. Right, but normally I would use a pike I think. If you have a few weapon sets then you could of course have a pike and a great sword and an arquebus potentially. Right, let's uh, move, get this combat started. Yeah. Okay, so he's been attacked. Let's bring what is it? my front line paladin and my front line front line mic forward, and then bring the fight to there as well. Hmm. I selected that, maybe not. Uh, I don't have a second crossbow actually, so I'll just keep on that actually. Right. Okay, we're outnumbered here. That's been hit by hobbles, by the looks of it. Uh. Great. Well, right, let's target that outlaw. Uh, I'm expecting hmm? some of these to try and slip past. Let's use my accuracy bonus. Well, he's actually attacked him. Let's hmm? right. That's been triggered. So let's use my archibus. Kill the wizard quickly, and get the monk involved there. Okay, so archibus used. Uh, I'm gonna keep it on for the time being, but I'm probably gonna switch it over in a second. I'm expecting one of these two to break engagement, so I need to keep the fight here to protect. There's actually another bandit coming in here. Okay. Eh? I would love to set the fighter in there, actually, but he's uh, loaded for a while. Let's cast his spells. Well. Fire ability should be kicking in there at least. <coughs> Mind that. That's right. We took him. The spellcaster down. Good. Yes. Let's take him out of the archibus next. I think. Yeah. Let's take him out and free him up. So it doesn't look as if any of them are breaking engagement, which I'm surprised by. Uh, right. He's taken hmm? down. Let's target that guy. Now, there we go. So that guy's now broken engagement. I probably yes. need to heal him up. Mm. So let's switch to the great sword. Now that takes a couple of seconds so I 
Yeah. That's not a great situation for me, actually. Let's pull the hmm. rogue back. Yes. And use the knockdown ability to take this guy out. Uh, Wait, he's engaged. Your eyes. Uh, yes. Yes. I think everyone's engaged. Right, he can stop now. Let's take down the outlaw. Okay. Brilliant, he's taken down. So everyone's engaged. No one's getting down here. Looks like I just lost my monk, sadly. So someone's going to be free well. up here. That guy in a second. Hmm. Let's try and take him out before he causes trouble for me. Might need... Actually, yes. let's use our clear out... Uh, ability here. Yeah! Okay, that's knocked him down. That helps yeah. a lot. Let's uh, attack that guy there. Hmm. Can attack him. So he's um, prone now. And he's prone for a long time as well because of the high intelligence of the fighter. And you can see how quickly we're attacking and how much damage we do. A lot. Now, if the fighter gets attacked, we take a lot of damage as well. Because he's a fighter and starts with really good stats. Well, uh, for health and endurance, let's heal this guy up again. And I'm here. We should probably take that guy down with him. Let's use that. Okay, he's dead. And he should be okay now. Let's take down the bandit. Okay, I think I'll call it an end of the video here. I know my fighter was definitely over leveled in his combat example. But I think you'll agree that he probably suits the role as a uh, sweeper, rescue DPS uh, type companion very well. They almost got to my backline, but I definitely managed to prevent them using the fighter, which is basically his role. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any fancy helping me out, you may want to give this video a like. If you have any feedback about this video or any questions, please use the comment section. In the next week or two, I'm planning on making quite a few more of these character creation videos. So if there's a certain class you want to see or a certain build, please let me know. And I'll try and do those sooner rather than later. If you're new to the channel, you may want to subscribe. There's plenty of content like this. There's a playlist you can find in the comment section for my other character creation videos. And there's a Pillars of Eternity Let's Play I've done as well. You can find a link to that here. In the very first video of that is actually a frontline fighter, which is very different to this one. Uh, there's some details on that there that you can find. Right, I think that covers everything I wanted to say in this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.